is News Channel 2 at 6 with Bill Worden. The story of Sarah Wood has affected all of us. The trail that has taken police this far began when Sarah suddenly dropped out of sight. When she first disappeared, the small community of Litchfield came rushing to help the Wood family. Perhaps she was only lost, but before long, everything led to an abduction. The five-foot brown-haired girl had been taken in only a moment's time while peddling home from her father's Norwich Corners church. The only evidence Sarah had even been there, her bicycle and some books. They were found strewn in an area just off Hackadam Road near where Sarah lived. Within days, the search had widened, and state police were brought in and an elaborate search plan put into effect, with volunteers combing literally every inch of an area in a 50-mile sweep out from Sarah's home. Her parents, Bob and Francis, with the help of the Sarah Wood Rescue Center, mount a strong campaign to get Sarah's picture on posters. Millions go out across the country, and the woods begin getting national coverage, appearing on shows like Donahue and Oprah Winfrey. Meanwhile, for the family, for her friends, for the community that has reached out so strongly to adopt this little girl into their hearts, we watch and wait. You're watching The Unfinished Journey, the 30-year search for Sarah. Here now is Jolene Ferris. Good evening, everyone. I'm grateful to have you with me. It's hard to imagine Sarah Ann Wood would be 42 years old today. She's forever in our hearts and minds, the 12-year-old girl kidnapped from a quiet street in her hometown of Litchfield in Herkimer County 30 years ago, never to be found. The case is closed. Her killer is serving life in prison for another child's murder with Sarah's sentence in the queue. But for Sarah's family and those state police investigators and prosecutors who've worked tirelessly for the past three decades to find Sarah, it's not over and it won't be until she's home. We begin tonight with a look back at that day 30 years ago tomorrow that forever changed us all. August 18, 1993, a catastrophic event on a quiet country road involving one little girl changed everything and everyone. It was probably around 4 o'clock when I first got notified. I'm not sure if it went through 911 in Herkimer County, but I got notified by our troop headquarters that there was a disappearance of a young child and it was had some suspicious uh, markings to it. Such a small town community, the Herkimer County District Attorney didn't even need to be formally notified. I drove by. I drove by. I live right around the corner. And uh, I drove by and I saw all the police present, so I just pulled in and uh, that's how I found out about it. As the minutes passed, hope that 12-year-old Sarah Ann Wood had perhaps taken a different route or stopped at a friend's house began to fade. We found her bicycle thrown in a bunch of brush off the side of Hackadam Road and all her church papers. She had been attending a summer program, Bible school, at her father's church, which was probably about a mile and a half away from her residence. She was on her way home on her bike when uh, she was abducted by Mr. Lott. But they didn't know on that day what unimaginable end Sarah had met, so they did all they could do. Looked for clues, looked for evidence, and looked for Sarah, a fruitless search of the area. Then, five months later, on January 7, 1994, a man named Louis Lent of North Adams, Massachusetts, tried to abduct 12-year-old Rebecca Savaris on her way home from school in Pittsfield, Mass. She escaped, faking an illness. Now retired John Wood was a New York State police captain at the time. I dispatched an investigator out to Massachusetts to interview him in the event that he knew something about Sarah Ann Wood. And it was right then at that time that he admitted it, and he admitted that he'd seen her pushing her bicycle because the chain was off. And that's when we, we, we knew we had our guy. You always hold something back that only you and the perpetrator would know. And in this instance, it was the chain off the bicycle. You'd had to bend there. Subsequent interviews of Lent trying to get him to reveal where he left Sarah Ann Wood were frustrating. And you could interview Mr. Lent for probably three, four, five hours, and he would lead you along the path, making you think he was all set to tell you something. And then he'd look at you and say, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know Sarah Ann Wood. And he'd go right back to ground zero, time and time again. 
Lent pleaded guilty to Sarah's murder on October 26, 1996, more than three years after he kidnapped and killed her. He was sentenced in Herkimer County Court, where he heard from Sarah's father, Bob Wood. On August 18th, you took my little girl, you kidnapped my daughter, Sarah, and you terrorized her. And to this day, you refuse to tell us where her body is. And these infamous parting words from Herkimer County District Attorney Michael Daly. And from all the people in this community that you've heard, and all the people in this community that you've changed their lives, our message to you, Lois, is burn in hell. Just saying what I felt, and that just came out and was... I meant it, and I'm sure he will. Lewis Lent is currently serving a life sentence in Old Colony Correctional Facility in Massachusetts for the murder of another child, 12-year-old Jimmy Bernardo of Pittsfield, Mass., with Sarah's sentence waiting in the queue. Based on information Lent has given to investigators, they braved sub-zero temperatures up north in Racket Lake. And what they're trying to do is get about two feet into the ground over a one acre area where they've cleared the snow away. That is what they think uh, could turn up Sarah Ann's body. But again, no sign of Sarah. Investigators say Lent has sent them on many wild goose chases through the years. They were Old Forge, the Berkshires, Mount Greylock uh, in Massachusetts, uh, areas down off Route 20, I believe Cherry Valley Way. We did some digging and we had a, uh, probably a dozen canines up in uh, Indian Lake area, did, did some excavating up there. Investigators have tried everything to get Lent to reveal where he left Sarah. We had with us the chief hypnotist from uh, the Naval Intelligence Services who does all of the uh, hypnotism for all the spy cases and all that stuff. Uh, for the, the Navy, and he was under hypnosis for, I'm going to say, probably four and a half hours. Uh, and he came, even then, he came right up to saying it, but he just wouldn't. And the hypnotist came out of that session and said, there's two things I can tell you for sure. One, he knows right where she is, and two, there's no question he did all these things. And a document Daly says was signed by everyone from the governors of New York and Massachusetts to the New York State and U.S. Attorneys General. If he would reveal where she was to be allowed to serve all of his time in federal prison as opposed to state prison, and he still didn't come through. Why won't Lent just say it? Those who've spent decades trying to persuade him can only speculate. It's one Trump card he still has, I guess. Um, the other reason could possibly be that there's other bodies there where he has her. That's always been a, th a thought. There's a reason, and, and one of the reasons is, is in my opinion, is probably because there's multiple bodies there. When Unfinished Journey returns after the break. When we were in Washington, Bob Wood said something that struck us all very deeply, and that was that out of the bad, we must bring about good. Unimaginable death and hundreds of other children were saved from an unimaginable fate. Posters of the missing and cleverly delivered messages of safety, how this tragedy galvanized regular citizens into an army to protect children and forever changed how we parent.